Start. We're going out to Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. And I got to tell you something, for those that uh, really are um, doing a, a lot of work for the conservative movement, and one has been just terrific is Congresswoman Bachman. We're gonna, we posted all of this on my website, Hannity.com, along with how the uh, current members of, of Congress stand at this moment on this monstrosity. Congresswoman, how are you? I'm doing great and just so pumped up and energized by all the people that have been coming to Washington, D.C. to try and bear down on these Democrat members of Congress to get them to vote no. What do you make of this deem and pass idea? I, we just had Jason Altmaier come on the program. I mean, I, I, I mean, it was just horrible. I mean, he's in a he, oh, I'll just wait for my constituents. He admits that he knows everything's corrupt. You can hear it. And he just didn't have the, I, I tell you, I, I'm sitting there saying you're losing your seat. Either that or he's planning on voting yes and knows that his career is in jeopardy. But here's my point. Let me let me say this, and I want to get your thoughts. You know, isn't this simple, basic 101, every bill shall be passed by the House of Representatives in the Senate and shall, before it become law, be presented to the President of the United States? Isn't this basic stuff? That's right. You, you can't pass a bill without voting on it. I mean, it, anyone knows that that's true. But Nancy Pelosi wants us to, they want, she wants her members to pass a bill this week that no one has read because it hasn't been written yet. No one knows how much it costs, and she wants them to pass it without voting on it. I mean, that sounds like a, like a laugh line from a laugh track of a situation comedy show, but that's what has descended into reality here in Washington, D.C. And I just want to encourage your listeners, I don't think it's inevitable that this will pass. I think they're looking at Saturday because we came into town on Monday, and by the time you get to Friday, members are pretty wrung out. They're pretty tired. We go all day, all night. And then to bring us, to keep us here on Saturday, Speaker Pelosi thinks that, that, uh, that the members of Congress will feel like everyone has gone away. They're looking at their weekend activities. They aren't paying attention. And when the, with the glare of the cameras aren't on, I think they figure that they can finally put the hammer down on those last 10, 12 members of Congress and get them to flip their vote. And that's why this is not a formal thing. This is not a big all-out rally. But if any of your listeners are able to come here between now and Saturday, but especially on Saturday, if any of them that are anywhere nearby could come here on Saturday, it would make a huge difference in D.C. because I think the Speaker will do what she did the last time, Sean, in the House. She brought all these young Democrat campaign workers in for the final vote to bird dog those Democrats to say, look, these are the people who elected you. These are the people who are going to volunteer to reelect you. If we could get regular Americans here on Saturday to come in and look in the eyes of the Jason Altmyers and say, do not vote on this unconstitutional phony bill, I think I think I think it could turn the tide. I don't. Well, I, it's it's, it's, a, it's, a it's obvious now. to me that he's being pressured tremendously oh, behind this. He wants yeah. to vote yes, and but he also wants to keep his job and he wants to stay elected here. The problem is, and I, what I don't think he's concluded yet, and probably may not conclude until it's too late. He, there's no place to run. There's no place to no. hide here. They, okay. you know, they keep moving this line back and back and back and back. And and the country's going to notice where everyone votes on this. And if well, you, you vote to change the rule uh, and say a bill was passed that was never voted on, that's a vote for the bill. The country gets that. Well, that's right. And there will be scores of lawsuits that will be filed. And this isn't even a close one. This idea of violating Article 1, Section 7, Clause 2. This isn't even close. This is clearly out of bounds, clearly unconstitutional. It'll be an illegal law, and no one should feel compelled to follow an illegal law. They, we, we won't have to. But the, the problem with all of this is that we don't want to get to that point. And, and what, all we're seeing this week is a big PR effort by the White House to try and trick you into thinking this is inevitable. They have the votes. They're going to vote. No. They don't. They don't have the votes. And as long as people keep ringing the phones, melting the phone lines here in D.C., they're coming here every day, Sean, by the bus loads and car loads. This is helping no. tremendously. Wait, and if people yeah. do that, go to the local district offices. But if they can still come here, 
we can defeat it, but our timeline is through Saturday. Are any of them telling you privately, being the Democrats, that they know that they're walking the plank here? What are they saying to you? Do you even have conversations with them at this point? Well, I think Speaker Pelosi has told them not to speak to us. Now, I, to, I this morning I spoke briefly with Jason Altmaier. Uh, Joe Donnelly spoke with him briefly. Um, and so they aren't tipping their hands to us. But we, no, we, we just had Jason all, Altmaier in our, and, and he was, the only thing he said is, I'll follow the will of my constituents. I mean, I, at this point, 14 months into this, how do you not know? Well, that's right, because all the polling data says three out of four Americans want us to scrap the bill and start yeah. over. People don't like us. I even met with a neurologist today. He was here at Capitol Hill, and he told me that he's worried that the best and brightest aren't going to want to go to medical schools anymore. And he's, he teaches young medical school students as well as act as a neurologist. Ninety percent of doctors don't want this bill. That was according to another doctor that I spoke with this morning. And by the way, I had a meeting with Dr. Tom Coburn, Senator Coburn, who said to me this morning that the abortion fix will not be in the Senate bill. It won't happen. And so these pro-life Democrats who pretend that they're going to get their abortion fix on the Senate side, it isn't going to happen. And so for the first time, we will have the American taxpayers being forced to violate their conscience to have to pay for other people's abortions. And so we can't let this happen. And that's why we have to keep the drum beat up. Today's Tuesday. We have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we've got to kill this by Saturday. If we kill it by Saturday, I think it's dead. Well, I, I hope you're right because there's so much writing on this, Congresswoman. Yeah. And I, I yeah. tell you, I've never, I've never felt so concerned as I do now for the future of this great republic. I share those sentiments exactly. That's why. Again, I'm not talking about a rally on Saturday. I'm just talking about could people please come here to D.C. if they at all can walk up and down these halls. It is very effective to do that because I think Saturday is when she's mm -hmm. going to corner these Democrats, and she'll bring her people in. She'll bring her campaign workers in. So th these members need to see real people come here to say, we haven't forgotten. We, we're here to hold you accountable. The biggest danger in this is laws don't matter anymore. The biggest danger here, uh, that they just pick and choo choose what laws they'll follow. They, they pick and choose when they decide that the Constitution is relevant and when it's not relevant. The, the, the danger is, is that they can bribe anybody with these backroom deals. Uh, and, it, and if they do that, Sean then uh, then our society won't be able to hold together very long. Because think of it in this way. What, what if those members that were taking the vote had an employment contract? Let's say they make $100,000 a year. And what if their employer said, well, gee, this, this contract doesn't really say I owe you 100000 I think I'll pay you 10000 this year. Uh, because the words on the sheet of paper don't mean anything. That's what these members are saying about the Constitution. The words on that sheet of paper in the Constitution don't mean anything. We know they do mean something at the end of the day. And that's why the American people are going to hold them accountable. And the courts will, too, I believe. I believe mm -hmm. that the courts will find this unconstitutional. But we don't want it to get that far. And honestly, we can stop this. I know people are tired, but we can stop it if we keep the pressure up through Saturday. They're saying now, now Clyburn is saying this may go past Easter. I don't, I don't know if you've had a chance mm. to look at the Drudge Report, but right yeah. now, I, I mean, you've got the four Democratic leaders all disagreeing on the status <laughs> of the bill. You've got Pelosi saying the Democrats have the votes. You've got Hoyer, you know, shooting down Larson's vote count, Clyburn's timeline. The Cl Clyburn says... You know, it could be pushed past Easter, and Obama is now refusing to campaign for Democrats voting no on health care. I mean, this is just a colossal mess. Well, yeah, it's like the Four Stooges, but see, what, what that tells you is that we're winning. And that's what I want your listeners to know, Sean. Because of how persistent they have been, they have won every round. We're at the bottom of the ninth now. In fact, we're at the very end of the bottom of the ninth. And your listeners have been so effective, Sean, in telling the members here in Congress to to vote no, that your listeners have won every single inning. Yeah. But this is the crucial inning. This is the final inning. And we're in the last couple minutes of the game. So we can't be tired and we can't let go now. It's, it's always darkest before the dawn. But have hope because Sunday's coming. 
Once Sunday comes, the president takes off in Air Force One for Indonesia. I think the American free, people are home free on health care, and I think we're going to win. So this is really the key week. This is You believe oh, that if we, if we win this week, we win this battle? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, this yeah. is, well, yes. you've never said that to me before, and you've been pretty good and accurate on your timelines here to four. We're not going to hold you to it, but I, I hope and pray. Do you realize, Congresswoman, this has gone on for 14 months Yes, I do. It's and the I, longest 14 months of my life. I've I, aged about 15 years. Now you look like you're getting younger by the day. But